In this video, I'm going to compare this filament with this filament. Hello and welcome to C.S. Wilson Prints. I'm C.S. Wilson. Like I said, in this video I'll be comparing two filaments to each other. Both are from Pryline. This is the new one. It's their super hard carbon fiber infused polycarbonate. And I'll be comparing this against this one, which is their normal uh, carbon fiber infused polycarbonate. This one I've actually purchased myself. I've purchased a couple of spools of this. Uh, I do like it. It prints very nicely. This was actually given to me by Pryline. Thank you, Pryline. Thank you very much. And so I'm going to be using this to see how it's different from the original one and see if it prints any better or any worse or however. I don't really have any scientific methods to test the strength, but I'm just really going to be testing out how easy it is to print with and uh, the appearance and all the uh, usual stuff that we like to see. In setting up for this, uh, I realized that I didn't have a hardened steel nozzle, which I do recommend for printing either one of these polycarbonates. So I got on Amazon and started looking for some hardened steel nozzles and I ran across something interesting that I also want to test out in this video, and that's this. So this is a ruby tipped nozzle. This is not an Olsen ruby nozzle. This is from uh, Mod 3DP. Uh, I've never heard of them. I'm not affiliated with them, but the nozzle was only $20 US on Amazon. It'll be worth the $20 experiment. And before I can do any printing at all, I need to install this. Uh, so let's get that going. And now that the nozzle's installed, I went in and I reset my Probe Z offset for my BL Touch, then did a G34 Auto Z alignment, and then a G29 Auto Bed Leveling. And then after all of that, I saved the settings. And those are things that I normally do after I swap the nozzle out, just because by swapping the nozzle out, those are the settings that change. I like to go back and review and change those settings periodically just because they change over time. And I like to keep the printer as accurate as what I can. So after all of that, I tested the nozzle a little bit just by printing out some calibration cubes and some benchies in various materials. The only other setting that I had to change on it was the nozzle temperature, which isn't unusual whenever I go from one nozzle to another. Say like I go from a brass 
nozzle to a hardened steel nozzle. I generally have to change the temp temperature of the nozzle. And my first impression of the Mod 3DP Ruby nozzle is that it prints very similar to all of the other nozzles that I've ever used. And that's a good thing because I didn't really expect it to print better. I was just hoping that it wouldn't print worse. So on that front, I'm gonna consider it a win. So there's one more thing that I wanna do, and this is what I would normally do to kinda of gauge how much wear is on the nozzle. And that is I just directly extrude some filament from the machine and then measure it with some dial calipers. So this is kind of a down and dirty method, but it actually can give you a pretty good indication of how much wear is on your nozzle. And to do this is fairly simple. You just heat the nozzle up to the appropriate temperature for whatever filament you have in there. And while that's heating, move the nozzle somewhere over the bed and then raise it up probably 50, 60 millimeters. Go to your control panel and just extrude 100 millimeters of filament. When that's finished, let it cool for a few seconds. Then remove the filament and measure it with your digital calipers. My digital calipers aren't all that accurate, so I figure that if I'm within 0.01 or 0.02 millimeters of the actual diameter of the nozzle, then it's accurate. So now after I print some of the carbon fiber polycarbonate, I will measure it again and see if there's any wear on the nozzle. So the hope is, after I print some of the carbon fiber polycarbonate, that the nozzle won't show any wear, or at least very little wear. I'd be happy with just a little bit of wear. Now let's go print some stuff with the carbon fiber polycarbonate. All right, so I've been printing with these filaments for the better part of the last couple of days. And here's what I found out. For both of these filaments, I did have to bump the temperature of the nozzle up just a little bit, like I had mentioned earlier, because of the new nozzle. So that was kind of expected. And Pryline recommends 250 to 270 C for the new super hard polycarbonate and 250 to 260 C for the regular polycarbonate. They also recommend a bed temperature between 80 and 110 C for both varieties. I used 260 for the nozzle and 90 for the bed, but I probably could have knocked the bed down to around 85C. As far as what I printed, it was just a small sampling of benchmarks and some parts that needed close tolerances. On the left are the parts I printed with the normal polycarbonate, and on the right are the parts I printed with the new super hard polycarbonate. They both printed exceptionally well, and the only noticeable difference between the two is the finish. The new super hard stuff has a more matte finish appearance and seems a bit smoother, although they both still have a slight texture. The color is very consistent for both and the filament doesn't appear to have any voids in it that can cause bubbles in the extrusion, which can also lead to tiny imperfections in the printed surface. There's a small amount of stringing, but they're actually very thin wisp and can easily be dealt with with a hot air gun. I don't really consider these small stringy wisps to be a property of the filament. I'm more likely to believe it's an improper slicer setting or two. All in all, they're both very good quality filaments and I'd recommend them for any machine that can handle the higher print temperatures. An enclosure would also be nice, but isn't really necessary unless you have an extremely cold or drafty environment. 
I also suggest you store this filament in a sealed bag with desiccant whenever it's not being used. As far as the $20 Mod 3DP Ruby Nozzle goes, after running about 100 grams of this very abrasive Priline filament through it, there was no apparent sign of anywhere at all, which I find incredible. So to check it, like I mentioned earlier, I did take and run another 100 millimeters of filament through the nozzle and found out that the measurements were almost exactly the same as the one I did earlier. And even though this was just a side experiment and I had no idea how that was going to turn out, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the results. Good on you Mod3DP for providing an affordable, wear-resistant Ruby nozzle for the 3D printing community. Okay, so with that, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope you found it informative, and if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. I'll leave links to the Priline filament and the Mod3DP Ruby nozzle in the video description below. Thank you for watching, keep 3D printing, and I'll see you in the next one.